Hi there, grade nines, and welcome once again to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I hope you're all well today and that you're coping well with this lockdown. Don't worry, it'll soon be over and we'll all be back to normal, hopefully. Right, let's go on. We are going to be looking at properties of geometric figures. It is our third lesson in this series, um, and we have looked at the properties of quadrilaterals. Today, we're going on to look at the properties of triangles. We're going to start off by looking at the different types of triangles. We're going to go over a lot of the properties and some of them can be interconnected. It doesn't matter. We'll go slowly and you'll see what I mean. Okay, the first one is a right angle triangle. Okay, there we have a right angle triangle. It means that one angle is equal to 90. It always has to be equal to 90. That gives it a right angle triangle. And just to go over something, we'll look at it again later, that that line opposite the right angle is called an hy a, sorry, a hypotenuse. It is a tongue twister, but nevertheless, that is the hypotenuse. It is opposite the right angle. Okay, so a right angle triangle means that one angle is equal to 90 degrees. Next one is an acute angle triangle. How we can remember this is acute means small. That means that all angles are acute. They are all less than 90 degrees. They're all small. Right. Triangle 3, an obtuse angle triangle. Now here, guys, we can't have all three angles being bigger than 90 degrees because remember that's what obtuse is. So only one angle is um, bigger than 90 degrees. One angle is obtuse, and in this case, it's this one, and it is it's always opposite the longest line, but we'll go over that again in a minute. The next one is an isosceles triangle. There we have an isosceles triangle. It means that two sides are equal in length. That's an isosceles triangle, as you know. That is primary school work. You would have done that. You would have looked at it in grade six or grade seven, probably both. Okay, and generally the angles opposite, not generally, always, the angles opposite the um, equal lines are also equal. So that angle is equal to that angle, they are opposite the equal lines, we'll go over that just now again. Right, a scalene triangle, that means that no sides are the same length, and it also means that no angles are the same length. So all three sides are different in length. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look at the properties of some triangles. In a triangle, as I said to you just now, the longest side is always opposite the biggest angle. So that would be an obtuse angle triangle. There's the biggest angle and there's the longest side, right? Longest side, biggest angle, opposite. Okay, in an isosceles triangle, as we looked at just now, the two angles opposite the equal sides are equal. So there's our two um, equal sides, these are two angles opposite the equal sides, it makes them equal. We often refer to them as the base angles of an isosceles triangle, even if it's not sitting on that line, even if it's the line is up here, it doesn't matter, we generally refer to them as the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Isosceles means two sides are equal anyway. Okay, number three, in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are equal to 60 degrees. This is not new to you. I know that. Okay, if remember, if you cut those out and put them on a straight line, they would make up a straight line, which would give you 180 degrees. Because it is an equilateral triangle, the angles need to be equal. So 180 divided by 3 would give us 60 degrees. Right. Number four, the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180. As I've just said just now with the equilateral triangle, we know that they're all 60 because they have to add up to 180. And because they're all equal, they would all be 60. But any triangle, the interior angles add up to 180. So if we have a look here, we'd get X, Y, and Z. Add them together would give you 180 degrees. There we go. Okay. If you don't believe me, draw a triangle, cut out your angles, put them onto a straight line and see if they give you 180 degrees. Okay, the next one, the sum of the opposite interior angles. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. Sorry about that, it was a bit mixed up. There we go. The exterior angle Q 
is equal to x plus y. Okay, the exterior angle means it's the outside angle. The two opposite interior angles mean it's two opposite inside angles. x plus y will give you q. And there we go. q is equal to x plus y, as you can see. All right, let's go on. We're going to look at the theorem of Pythagoras. I also think you might have covered this in grade 8, but just in case you haven't, let's go over it slowly. Okay, according to Pythagoras, who was an ancient Greek mathematician, he said, he figured it out, that the square of the hypotenuse, remember I showed you the hypotenuse just now, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Sure, what a mouthful. Let's have a look. Okay. That's the hypotenuse there, A and AC is the hypotenuse. It is opposite your right angle. So the square of that is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. Okay, there you can see it's the hypotenuse. We often use this to work out the sides of a triangle. But remember, it is only in the case of a right angle triangle. There's your right angle. As long as that little sign is there, then we can use this rule. We can use the theorem of Pythagoras. Okay, let's just go over it once more. The square of the hypotenuse, so it's AC squared, is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. Okay, so let's say this was 6 squared, that would be equal to 5 squared plus 3 squared if, that, um, if those are the sides. All right, right, there we go. AC, AC squared, remember it's the whole thing, AC squared, equals AB squared plus BC squared. Okay, and if one of them is left out, you can use your algebraic rules to figure out what the value of that side is. Remember, when you get the answer, it is squared, so you have to square root it to come back to the original length. Okay, let's go on. Right, how to work out if triangles are congruent. Okay, congruent means that they need to be exactly the same shape and exactly the same size, so almost identical. Okay, so there are four conditions that we can use um, to prove congruency. The one is that all three sides are equal in length, and we use that as the proof, SSS. So let's have a look at the diagram. You can see that the sides are equal. That side is equal to that side, that side to that side, and that side to that side. So we've got three sides that are equal. That means that everything else in those triangles will be the same. So those triangles are congruent. Okay? SAS is another proof where two sides are equal in length and the angle between them um, is equal in both triangles. So if we have a look at the diagram, there's the diagram. Okay, we've got um, two sides, that side is equal to that side, that side is equal to that side, and the angle in between them, are, those angles are equal, which means that we've got side, angle, side, that is a proof of congruency. Okay, so three sides or side, angle, side. Okay, the next one is side, angle, angle, where one side is equal in both triangles and two angles are equal in size. Like that, we've got a side that's equal, that angle is equal to that angle, and that angle is equal to that angle. Okay, we've got side, angle, angle. So just to go over, we've got side, 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 angle, side, and side, angle, angle. And there's one more, and that's right angle in both triangles. So the, right, the R is for the right angle that appears in both triangles. Then the two hypotenuse sides are equal in length. And one other side is equal in both triangles. So if we have a look here at the um, two triangles, we can see there's your right angle. So it's both triangles have got a right angle. The hypotenuse sides are equal in length. That one is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. This one is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. Those two sides are equal. And then one other side is equal. So there we could call right angle hypotenuse and side. It's actually just the same as side, angle, side, because the hypotenuse is a side, the right angle is an angle. But this makes it a little bit more specific. It's a right angle, the hypotenuse, and another side. Right. Let's see if we can use 
if the following triangles are congruent, they are the following triangles. I've already given you the reason. Just now you're going to work it out on your work one out on your own. Um, but let's have a look. Okay, we've got triangle CAB, or you can call it BAC, or you can call it BCA. It really doesn't matter how you name a triangle as long as you include all the vertices. Okay, remember the vertice is the point of the triangle, the corner of the triangle. Okay. So here we are given CA is equal to AD, CA is equal to AD. We are given that by those little markings. Always look out for as much detail as you can. BA is equal to BA. It is a common side. Okay, we don't have to be given anything there because we can see that the two triangles share that side, which means it must be the same for both triangles. And then angle B1 is 90 degrees. And we know that angles on a straight line are um, equal 180. So the other one, B2, must also be 90 degrees. So B1 is equal to B2. They're both 90 degrees. So that should be given. CA is equal to AD. It should say given. BA is equal to BA. It's a common side. B1 is equal to B2. They are both 90. You could have also said angles on a straight line. Um, and therefore, triangle CAB, that one over there, is congruent to triangle DAB. Look at the little congruency sign. It's three lines. It's like an equal sign with an extra line. Okay? It's congruent. And if you say that the triangles are congruent, you must always give a reason. And there's your reason. Side, angle, side. Okay? SAS. Okay, let's look at another one. See if you can do this one. There's your, your diagram, your two triangles. I want you to pause the video. I want to see if you can do this on your own. Don't worry if you're struggling a little bit. This is the first one that you're doing. We'll go over it together, and then we can see where you went wrong. Okay, let's have a look. Right, we've got POM, that's the one triangle, and we've got MNK is the other triangle. So PO and NK, there's, I've written down for you, that was given, those are equal in length, those two sides. Then we've got O, um, angle O is equal to angle K. There's O and there's K. That's also been given. And then we're very lucky because a third element has been given to us where we have a right angle in each um, triangle. So P, angle P is equal to angle N. That's also been given. So therefore, triangle POM is congruent to triangle MNK. Remember what I said? It doesn't matter if you've written the, the letters around the, a different way, as long as you've got all three letters in some order and your congruency sign looks right. It's the three little lines. Okay? And you need to put in your reasoning here. It's side, angle, angle. That's not right. It's not side, angle, side. It's side, angle, angle. Okay. Let's just go over it again. There's the side that was given. There's the angles that were given. And there's your right angles. Okay, and there we have it. Given, given, given. They all three are given. And it's side, angle, angle. Right. There's one more for you to do. There's the diagram. Again, pause your um, video. Try and work it out with as much detail as you possibly can. You need three things to prove that they are congruent. And then we will go over it. So pause your video now. Work it out. And we will go over it together. Right, here we go. How did you do? We've got LP is equal to MO. That was a given. Okay, now we're going to come in with our angles, our um, line angles. M1 is equal to N. Okay, M1 is equal to N. Why? Because MP and NO are, um, they are parallel which means that M1 and N are actually corresponding angles. Do you see that? There's your parallel lines. So you can say that that one is um, equal to that one because they are corresponding angles. And MP is parallel to NO. Okay? Then we've got M3 is, para is equal to L. The same reason. Okay? M3 is equal to L because LP and MO are um, parallel and they are corresponding angles. Have a look there again. 
that one is equal to that one. There we have it, corresponding angles. So here we have therefore LPM or LMP or MLP, whichever you want to name it, is congruent. We've got three lines there, like an equal sign. And that's congruent to M-O-N or M-N-O, whatever you wanted to name it. And our reasoning for that is side, angle, angle. Let's just go over it one more time. Okay. You must always look for as much detail as possible. So here, it's not a coincidence that those were um, labeled, that they were parallel. Always look for that and always see how you can use the parallel lines that have been given to you to find alternate angles, to find corresponding angles, to find co-interior angles. Okay, so here LP was the first thing that should have stood out to you is the same as is equal to MO that was given because of the lines on the sides of the triangle. Okay, M1 is equal to N because of your parallel lines, MP is parallel to NO or ON, whichever way around you want to name them, okay? They are corresponding angles. So, so far we've got an angle in each one that are equal, a side in each triangle that's equal. Then the third reason is probably the other parallel lines, okay? We've got M3 is equal to L, again they are corresponding angles, but this time the parallel lines are LP and MO. Okay, can you see that there? So therefore, so we've got to use the therefore sign, triangle LPM is congruent to triangle MON, and our reasoning is because we've got a side that's the same and two angles, so it's SAA. Right? Did you all get that? Okay. Well done, grade nines. Wonderful work today. There was a lot of information in today's lesson. Um, I'd like you to go over that information part again, because as we go on, so we're going to be applying more and more and more of those properties, okay? And you're going to need them going right through to matric. You're going to always draw on those properties, okay? I just want to say very, very well done so far for what you've been able to do. Don't forget to do the activity. And remember also, don't forget to send any queries, any questions that you have to Worksheet Cloud, um, Grade 9, sorry, Worksheet Cloud at, oh, let me start that one again, Grade 9 at WorksheetCloud.com. That is your email address. Please don't forget to send any queries that you have and somebody will get back to you. Right. Good luck with your activity. Don't forget to check carefully against the memo. You may name your triangles a few different things or your lines a few different things in, or rather the letters in different orders. Please remember that doesn't matter as long as you have all three letters there. Okay, have a lovely day further and I will see you again in the next lesson. Thank you for listening.